So we all know about the big fight between Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia. And in this video, I want to break down how I see it playing out and the truth of the matter, which I feel is that this is actually a very competitive fight. A lot of people think this is going to be a mismatch. Canelo Alvarez is going to dominate Munguia. He's going to walk through him. He's going to win a comfortable decision or just simply outclass him throughout 12 rounds. And in my opinion, I really don't think that's the case. I think this will be a very tough fight for Canelo. I think this is not a great fight stylistically for Canelo. It's obviously not a good fight stylistically for Munguia, but I think Munguia will cause Canelo a lot more problems than people realize. I think stylistically, Munguia is not the ideal matchup for Canelo Alvarez. In this video, I'm going to break down why Munguia gives Canelo problems at the basic truth that I believe that this will be a very tough and competitive fight and actually a pretty close fight as well. So I'm going to break down right away why I think Munguia gives Canelo some problems. Now, first of all, this, in my opinion, is probably the most obvious reason. And in my opinion, this will definitely give Canelo the most issues out of any element for Jaime Munguia. And that is that Canelo Alvarez is a fighter who doesn't throw too many punches throughout a fight and will take breaks and even rounds off. Jaime Munguia has one of the best punch outputs in the entire sport. He throws bunches and bunches of punches throughout the fight. He never lets off the gas. He goes upstairs, downstairs. He throws in combinations. He throws flurries. He fights at a high pace, and because of this fact, I am very confident that Canelo will give up a lot of rounds in this fight. At least four, in my opinion, maybe five. Around four to five rounds in this fight, I see Canelo Alvarez is simply getting outworked. If you look at one of Canelo Alvarez's best career performances when he took on Danny Jacobs, my scorecard for that fight was 115-113 Canelo Alvarez. Canelo was clearly a, f a level or two above Danny Jacobs in that fight. He fought the better fight than Jacobs. He was outclassing him. He was making him look silly. And at points, he was making him look like a C minus, D plus level fighter. However, one of Canelo Alvarez's biggest flaws, which I mentioned a minute ago, is that he takes rounds off and that he doesn't let his hands go too consistently. And because of that, he gave away rounds to Jacobs where Jacobs didn't even do that much. He never hurt Canelo. He never had him in trouble. He wasn't even letting his hands go that much. But because Canelo was so complacent in certain rounds and was so defensive-minded in certain rounds, he let himself get out work at points and was giving away rounds. Now, this is Danny Jacobs, a guy who, yes, you can say at that time, a better fighter than Munguia, but also a guy who doesn't let his hands go as much as Munguia, who doesn't throw as many flurries, who doesn't fight at the pace of Munguia. He was able to win five rounds on my card. and most people's cards, he won at least four rounds. He won five rounds on mine just by doing that. If you look at other fights Canelo's had, Sergey Kovalev, this happened as well. Kovalev, this wasn't the same case as Jacobs. Obviously, Kovalev bigger than Jacobs, better than Jacobs at the time. Canelo Alvarez was giving away a lot of rounds just off of inactivity. Throughout his entire career, even in his recent bout against Triple G, the third one, where Triple G was a shell of his former self, we basically pretend that fight didn't happen, right? He gave away a good amount of rounds in that fight. I don't listen to anyone who says that fight was 119-109. That was a much more competitive fight than people will tell you. Triple G won a lot of those later rounds. I don't care what anyone says. Canelo Alvarez has a problem of taking rounds off. And even though he's very selective of his shots and he makes his shots count, there are times where he just doesn't land anything and he gives up the round. So I think due to that fact, obviously there's other reasons I'm going to break down in a moment, but that's the main reason why I feel this will be a, a competitive fight for Canelo. Now, a lot of people are going to have a rebuttal, a rebuttal, I guess that's a better way to say it, right? A lot of people are going to disagree with my point, not because they don't s see where I'm coming from, but they'll state that because Munguia opens up so much and because he's so aggressive, Canelo Alvarez, one of the best counter punchers in the sport, will counter Munguia and put him to sleep. Now, there's a few elements this I disagree with. First of all, I do agree that he will counter Munguia to oblivion at points in the fight. I do see that happening. However, when it comes to him knocking Munguia out, him putting Munguia to sleep, first of all, Munguia has a granite chin. We all know this. He has a tremendous chin. And second of all, who's the last guy we've seen Canelo Alvarez knock out? I mean, yes, he stopped Caleb Plant. I'll give him that. He did stop Caleb Plant. It wasn't due to a counterpunch, in my opinion. When you look at the stoppage of Plant, Plant was completely gassed, and Canelo took advantage of it and got the stoppage. It was not because he countered Plant perfectly. He stopped Billy Joe, but that was due to an orbital bone break and Billy Joe quitting. And in that scenario, I mean, yes, I guess it kind of was a counter when you look at the shot he landed on Billy Joe Saunders. But even then, if Munguia was in that situation, I don't think he would have stopped, gotten the stoppage. I think Munguia would have survived. And aside from that, who has Canelo really stopped uh, that's been above 160? And even at 160, who did he really 
TKO. He's not a, a big finisher. Yes, he stopped Kovalev, but that wasn't from a counterpunch either. That was from Kovalev, again, being gassed and Canelo taking advantage of it. I understand fighters getting gassed against Canelo. Canelo goes to the body. He does have a decent gas tank, not a great gas tank, but he goes to the body early. He it continues to invest there, and he gets the guys out of there, right? But Munguia is not a guy who I see tiring and getting stopped. If he gets stopped, it's going to be from one punch, and I don't think Canelo has that power at 168 to do so. It's possible. If he's stopping anyone at this weight class, it would be Jaime Munguia, not Benavidez, not Bival, not Paterbiev. But I don't see him getting the stoppage here. I don't think he's going to knock Munguia out for one punch. Aside from that, Munguia is a young, hungry, undefeated prime fighter who's going to come to win, give it his all. He throws a lot of punches. He's going to give Canelo some problems. If you look at Canelo versus John Ryder, John Ryder gave him issues due to activity. And John Ryder, as we saw recently, is not on Munguia's level. Munguia is going to give Canelo problems. It's going to be a much better fight than you guys expect. I'm very certain of it. I think this fight is actually more dangerous for Canelo than people realize. Now, for my early, very early prediction of this fight, am I picking Jaime Munguia to upset Canelo Alvarez? No, I'm not. I've thought about it, and I've never even gotten that close to picking Munguia. The closest I've gotten was saying that Munguia can make it controversial, but I'm going to go with a 7 5 8 4 decision for Canelo. I do still see him as the better fighter than Munguia. I think he's actually decently better than Munguia. The only thing is, stylistically, Munguia's style is not ideal for Canelo. But I see Canelo countering Munguia. I see him. I'm not sure if he's going to build a lead early and Munguia is going to come on late. I'm not exactly sure how the fight's going to play out when it comes to who will be more dominant at which point of the fight. I think it'll be a fight where it's pretty consistent throughout the 12 rounds. I don't see either fighter taking over or either fighter giving away multiple rounds early or giving away multiple rounds late. I don't see Munguia being able to hurt Canelo, in my opinion. I mean, the only way it could possibly hurt Canelo is if maybe he hits Canelo with a combination and, and Canelo gets hurt due to just the amount of shots Munguia landed. But Canelo has very good defense. I see him evading most of Munguia's work throughout this fight. And also, if bigger punchers that Canelo fought couldn't hurt him, I can't see Munguia being the guy to do so. I said the same thing about Jermel Charlo, and most people agreed with me, but there were a few people that disagreed with me, and I thought they were pretty delusional, and I was proven correct. Jermel never had Canelo hurt, even in the slightest. I will say this fight will definitely be more competitive than the, than the Jermel Charlo one. I want you guys to know that as well. I don't see him being able to hurt Canelo, and Canelo, I do think, is capable of hurting Munguia because we have seen Munguia buzz. We've seen him stun. Spike O'Sullivan, out of all people, was one of them to hurt Munguia. But I felt that was a younger Munguia, much more reckless Munguia. I see him fighting Canelo much smarter and him just being a much more seasoned fighter. He's improved a lot, though, Munguia, and I give him a lot of credit for that because if this was asked a year and a half, two years ago, this would be a complete mismatch still. But Munguia has been moved very, very tentatively throughout his career. He's been matched up very strategically. And it's funny because Munguia is the type of guy where he would not have faced, he would not have been matched up with John Ryder or Sergei Dervinchenko a couple years ago. But right when he was able to beat those guys, they put him in there with him. Because I'll say this, the Dervinchenko that fought Triple G, I would have picked to beat the version of Munguia that fought him. I mean, he barely beat their, a, a older Dervinchenko. Imagine what Dervinchenko in 2019 would have done to him, right? So I noticed that they're very strategic with that, and Oscar and Golden Boy, they've done a great job moving him because they've given him a lot of learning experiences in his fights. He's had a lot of difficult fights. He's had to dig deep, and they put him in of just the right level of opposition to where he'll win, but he'll have problems, and he'll learn in the meantime. And it's interesting because now... Since they've been so good at matching Munguia up throughout his career, now they are comfortable enough to put him in of Canelo. So I wonder if they see something that we don't. I personally disagree with that notion, but there is a possibility that Munguia could just find a way to, to navigate and pull off another competitive win. You never know, right? But I'm going to go with Canelo on points. That's my final prediction. You guys let me know your, your thoughts in the comment section below. Another fun little element to this fight, before I, before I wrap this up, I want to bring up, is the whole fact that this is Oscar De La Hoya's fighter. And Canelo, as we know, has beef with Oscar and how he used to be with Oscar and so on. So I think that makes the fight a little more fun as well, a little more interesting. Hopefully there's a buildup off of that fact. I hope the press conferences can live up because Munguia and Canelo are both pretty soft-spoken guys. I mean, Canelo has raised the tempo a little bit, but throughout his career has been pretty soft-spoken. So I hope Oscar De La Hoya can get himself in the picture and, and make this a little more interesting. I mean, it's already an interesting fight that we're all looking forward to, or at least most of us are. I am even though it should be Benavidez, but that's a whole other video. I've made like five videos on how Canelo's ducking Benavidez, so I'm not going to get into that. Hopefully, I really do genuinely hope so, that Oscar can make this fight even more fun for the fans. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, though. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. God bless. I'll see you guys later. Peace.